there are many lawyers, architects, engineers, builders, and even medical doctors out there who are oversubscribed. The establishment they preside over is not expanding as it were, though the, it has saturated. It has saturated because it's all revolving around them. And I would like to use your experience and example as a case study into showcasing what such persons need to be doing for them to, one, be able to shed the toga of business. Which Thank you very much. That is a fantastic question. You start by setting a goal, writing it down that you want to own the company and have people work there. And then you give yourself a time lag, maybe three years, five years. The starting point... You still want to be a lawyer or a medical doctor, but you want to run it like a business. Yes, to run it like a business, which means you will still practice, but you can go on holiday for two months. And you can go on point. sabbatical for one year. That's what I mean. You did that at some point. You, know, you see? So, the starting point of going somewhere is having an idea what the destination looks like. Mm. You understand? You set a goal and then possibly write a little essay about how it will feel when you are able to leave the practice and let other people do it. How will it feel? What will be the scenario at that time? Mm. Once you have that well documented, it guides your thinking your soul as it were yes. in the direction of where you are going because it's been said over and over again what you can write about you can bring about what you can write about you can bring about another law of attraction is what you can feel about you can bring about you understand so when you write your feelings how does it look like how does it feel like what would be the entire scenario? Once you have done that, then you will set to work. You will have a system of values that you think can navigate the current business in that direction. Hmm. What are the value system put in place that are compatible with the journey in the direction of autopiloted business. Because what we are talking about is that you want the business to run autopilot. An autopilot. You understand now? So once the value is well understood, it should be maybe about four to five or maximum seven values. You understand? Of course, we are going to be mentioning things like honesty as an as a foundational, a foundational principle. principle, honesty, hard work, humility, cleanliness, friendliness, you understand, and things like that, and then ethics, ethics, you understand. So once you come up with all of that, these are things that are teachable, then your next assignment will be, which is usually what they call the first law of management to hire the right people those who possess the same value can be retained those who have brilliant values especially the core values must be allowed to live so no enjoy. sentiments you see when objectivity is the essence because hmm. your role is that of an a fair empire, umpire, a, a moderator. Mm. You understand? It's like a manager's job is that of working with people and raising their potentials, bringing out their resourcefulness. So, so when, when you're determining those who will form part of the team, as it were, um, the values has to be the checklist. That has, that is a, it no has, two way no two way about it. The values not, that you are writing out. If you have the best worker who is dishonest, he must leave. 
You understand? You see, like it's been said, also they said, to move your organization up, it's all about the people. Because a company can only grow at the rate at which the people are competent. Competent organizations, competent people, you understand? But first competent people. You grow the people to grow the business. You do not use the people to grow the, the business. You use the business to grow the people. If you are going up, it has to be all about attitude. It is the attitude, not the aptitude, that will spell your altitude. You understand? So if you are going to a high altitude, it has to be as a result of high attitude, not a high aptitude. People can be trained to do the work well. That is why you hire nice people. You can never train people to be nice. You can't what? train attitude. You can't train attitude because people are fixed in their ways. You understand? Rather than the labor, the sleepless nights, the worry, the anxiety of teaching a thief to be good. Why do all of that? Hire good people. That is why 90% of your concentration should be attitude. 90%. Not the whole 60. 10% aptitude. Because aptitude can be learned. It can be learned. Can be Good people can become great. 90% to attitude. Attitude. If you do that, if you are able to have a good team, half of your job of delegating the entire organization to them is well underway.